One thing I get very concerned about is this presidential election being decided by Clarence Thomas in a Supreme Court instead of the American people. Last night, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez held a live stream to finally discuss why she has been so critical about the idea of replacing Joe Biden. So while it appears that all of the forces have combined, be it, you know, the establishment, the more left wing voters have all agreed that replacing Joe Biden is a good idea. The holdouts have been people like AOC, Ilhan Omar, Bernie Sanders, people that clearly lean left within the party. And there have been a lot of questions as to why are these the these people who should be, you'd think, uh, the most concerned about Donald Trump winning. Why have they been, been so critical about replacing Joe Biden? Well, let's go through a bit of AOC's uh, live stream. So I watched the full thing. I broke it down here through several clips. Let's start. This class of donors, decision makers, power players, etc., started to waver after the debate. And they're looking at the polling and they're, they're looking at the performance and they're saying all of these things and they're saying, we need to jump ship. What we know- All right, starting off, donors. Big donors have been the ones driving this conversation. So when she's in these rooms with her peers, other Congress people, they aren't talking about the concerns of their voters. They're talking about the concerns of their big donors. And AOC is someone who doesn't take, you know, big corporate money. She doesn't have that concern. But when you have big donors driving the conversation, I can understand why that would be concerning. That said, the clear retort to that is that it's not just big donors who are concerned. It's also voters. You look at polling around Democratic voters. The majority are open, uh, are actually want to see Joe Biden replaced. But. That isn't her only concern. In fact, I think she makes some some solid points coming up. No, is that we can virtually guarantee, uh, you know, Mike Johnson came out and said that they're absolutely preparing legal challenges to wherever it's possible. Um, and I wanna tell you those legal challenges are most viable where? In the same handful of swing seats that are needed to win the presidency. I'm not saying every single one is counted out, but I am saying that's what's at the table. And guess what? Republicans, they mount that legal challenge. The possibility of our elections being decided by a Supreme Court ruling skyrocket. This, I think, is the... Again, I watched the full thing. Is the is the the most the, the most likely concern, or the 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 concern that I understand the most that that she brings up here, is just that the potential legal challenge by the the Republican Party, which all as she says, you can you can guarantee that they are going to challenge this in some way, and because even if these challenges don't make sense, we've seen Republican judges side with Trump even when it doesn't make sense. We've seen Supreme Court rulings this year that don't make any legal sense, but these are seats held by Trump appointees and they side with the most conservative position. So there's this worry here. Now, it, it, it's, it's unfortunate that politics even has to operate this way where you're so concerned about the uh, you know, lack of legitimacy about what the courts may do because of a Republican challenge, but that's the situation that Americans are currently in, and I can understand why this would be a concern. That said, you could argue, well, if they're going to challenge that, then they could challenge Biden anyways. You know, he, what if he wins the election and they find a way to challenge that? Uh, yes, but there would be more, there's more of a legal gray area here uh, when it's somebody who's not yet on the ticket. And there's a concern, especially as it applies to Ohio, that she, I cut it out of this video, but she brings up a concern um, about this legal challenge as it applies to o Ohio that p potentially could be applied to other states. So that's, I, I understand this concern the most. The issue is, or I should say her issue is, is that, you know, this concern would go away if there were people in the room who had this mapped out. And so far from the discussions that she's been in, nobody actually knows the process. No one actually has mapped out 
how they may be challenged, what the what the response to those challenges may be. And that's what's concerning to her. If you think that there is consensus among the people who want Joe Biden to leave, that Kamala, that they will support Kamala, Vice President Harris, you would be mistaken. And I'm gonna say that because if they're gonna come out and say all their little things on background off, off the record, but they're not gonna be fully honest, I'm gonna be honest for them. I'm in these rooms. I see what they say in conversations. A lot of them are not just interested in removing the president. They are interested in removing the whole ticket. This also goes, I think, to the potential legal challenge. If it's Kamala Harris replacing Biden, I think there's less of a worry there because she's already on the ticket. She is the vice president. He'd likely be stepping down over health reasons. It's it's harder to challenge that, even though I'm sure they would probably try. If it's a completely new ticket and there is no actual primary process to put them in place and it's all done at the convention, sure, it may look fine on paper, but that opens up the challenge. And, and in addition to that, you then have essentially just big donors choosing who they think is best for them to go on the ticket. And Joe Biden, for for his many faults, especially over the past uh, year or so, as it applies to, to to Israel, he has been he has been a incredibly strong working class president in terms of labor, in terms of the NLRB specifically. Now, you may even want to argue against that and say, well, it's not him. It's who he put there. Sure, fine. It's who he put there. It's the NLRB has been fantastic under Joe Biden. Is his replacement that isn't Kamala Harris, are they going to have that same agenda, especially if big donors are choosing that person? Unlikely. Of course, those discussions, I think, should happen past November. Uh, I think the focus right now should be avoiding Donald Trump. But it's it's still worth thinking about who is behind these uh, these decisions. I'm not here to tell you that if Joe Biden is the nominee, he's definitely going to win. But because I don't think if anybody is the nominee, we're definitely going to win. I can also tell you that I have stood up in rooms with all of these people and I said, and I have said, game out your, your actual plan for me. Game it out. Have you looked in, like, what are the risks of this going to the Supreme Court? Like, what are these things, right? And I'm not here to, like, assert any major thing. If y'all want to come with the receipts in the comments, that's fine. But what I can tell you is that I have stood up in rooms of folks making these decisions. And I have raised these questions and no one had an answer for me. Maybe they have an answer now, I don't know. No one's gotten back to me, but hello? Like nobody responded, nobody has responded to me. And I'm not talking about some pundit with a column in a newspaper saying theoretically it's possible. I'm talking about the lawyers. I'm talking about the legislatures. I'm not talking about, here's how a, an open convention would go down. I'm talking about people whose job it is to look at the letter of the law and the letter of many different states' state laws and take a look at this, okay? I think a lot of us having these conversations about replacing Joe Biden just sort of, and it's important to catch ourselves here, it, just incorrectly assume that the party knows what they're doing, that they have their shit together, that they have mapped this out, that they are aware of potential legal challenges or the, the legality of doing this in, in various states, especially as it applies to swing states. We just assume this is all because these are professionals. If they're talking about this, they must have a plan. It sounds like they don't. <laughs> this is it. It seems, sounds like they know as much as we do. So I completely understand this worry. Like this worry, especially of there just there has not been a plan. She has not. She's in these rooms, these backdoor rooms, and no one has mapped this out properly. So if somebody were to map this out properly for for her and and others, 
I think it would help to, uh, you know, alleviate some of those concerns, but that hasn't happened. So it makes total sense why someone who is concerned about the details and concerned about a Supreme Court challenge would be concerned about this process. There is no safe option. There's no safe option. And I think given the stakes of this moment, we all want to run to safety and we want to run to the sure thing. And I think it's important to operate with integrity. If you 10,000% are super convinced that, that the candidate or the president cannot beat Donald Trump, then like do what you think is in your, your good conscience. But I have not seen a scenario, an alternative scenario that I feel does not set us up for enormous peril. People think this election is in November, the convention is in four weeks, and early ballots go out, the first early ballots in this country go out four weeks after that. This election is not in November, it's in September. It's in the end of September, it's in early October. And so we're almost in August. So I think we need to sit with the stakes, with the reality. And if you come to the same conclusion, fine. But I'm not seeing enough discussion. And I also don't want people to take for granted that the people in these rooms, like, totally for sure 10,000% have a plan. Maybe somebody does and they're not sharing it. That's also a possibility. What I'm saying is like the mechanisms by with which this decision is being made is concerning me. And when I'm talking to folks in rooms, I hear my donor this, my donor that. Those are the inputs that I am hearing reflected by my colleagues. It's not my voters this, my voters that. Every once in a blue moon. But from what I am hearing, my inputs a lot is donor, donor, donor. Two million, like there was like some, you know, it's like big donors are saying this, big donors are saying that, big donors, like I could give two dams about what a bunch of rich people think. What I care about is about what the working class thinks. For I will say this is her worst argument simply because this is the same as it applies to every issue. It's always going to be about their donors. Their, their, that doesn't mean that their voters also don't feel the same way. So if it, if it was if this was just coming from the donors, I totally get these concerns. Of course, this shouldn't even be a conversation about replacing Joe Biden. But it isn't just the donors. It is the voters. It is the polling. It is the data. So, it, the, the, and again, I'm looking at data here. You know, AOC is on the ground talking with voters. I'm sure she has a different perspective. She she isn't as, she's not going to be as into the, the, the polling aspect. Actually, she's going to get to it maybe here or in a second. She'll discuss uh, polling around her race and how it compared to her, the actual um, result. But I can understand her, you know, concerns there when the only conversation she's hearing or the only thing she's seeing that is driving this conversation is about the big donors. For example, whether you like it or not, whether you may think whatever you may think about it, Joe Biden kind of like stops with older people, like electorally, which is one of the strongest and most consistent electorates. And it's actually a hard electorate for Democrats to win. You know, it, those are not people that are on Twitter, but they vote more consistently than almost any other bracket. So you take that off the table, you cannot assume that that electorate transfers to any other candidate. But w one thing I get very concerned about is this presidential election being decided by Clarence Thomas in a Supreme Court instead of the American people? And that's already happened once in our history. And that's how George Bush became president. And so the idea that that's 
not something that would happen, like let's not dismiss that possibility so readily. This year, this year, I had a primary election. My polling had me down by um, like about double digits from where I ended up performing. So my own polling, private polling, had me underperforming a lot more than what I actually ended up performing at. Now, I don't know what that means, right? Like, what I, I don't know what that means. I'm not here to say that that's every race, but I need people to understand that like, making a decision based on July polling. Like, I think if we could have just a little bit more dimensions to the case, uh, that would be helpful. All right, and it's not just on Ju July polling, it's on the entire year. It's on comparisons this year to where Biden was in 2020 and how Biden overperformed in 2020. Even though he won, he overperformed in the polling in 2020. So, and now he's losing to Trump, and he has been losing to Trump this entire year. So, it's, I think the concerns about polling is, are accurate, and there are reasons to be concerned about the polling. But when it comes to, you know, I, some of these arguments, I, I, I at least better understand now why someone like AOC or Bernie Sanders or Ilhan Omar, why are, why they are, more critical of this movement to replace Joe Biden because they're in these rooms. They see what is driving the conversation, big donors. They uh, are concerned about the, the process or lack of process and what the Supreme court may do, or, you know, the potential challenges that the GOP may have that may go to the, that may go to the uh, Supreme court. And they see how they see firsthand how incompetent the democratic party is. Like she's probably not going to say that directly or, but she kind of, says that here. <laughs> she's, not, she's like, no one in the room has an answer. No one has mapped this out. It, 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 this is one thing I think we, we can all agree on. Uh, agree on. No one, you, you cannot underestimate how incompetent the Democratic Party is. So that I 100% uh, am on board for, and, and I completely understand the concerns there. I would like to know what you think. Uh, has this has her arguments here, has AOC's arguments, have they moved you in any way? Do you feel differently about the idea of replacing Joe Biden or has it not done anything for you?